So I'm reading something that I wrote uh, December 14, 2008. So, December 14, 2008, the war on drugs. With the authority of God, legalize marijuana. It needs to be legalized. Should have been legalized. Never should have gone illegal, frankly. When it comes to the war on drugs, the drugs are winning. So, join the bandwagon. Be against prohibition. Usually those fuckers who are for prohibition are a bunch of old, crusty, bacon chawed prudes anyways. <laughs> Fucking bacon chaw. So I joined Team Oxycontin. Thanks, Medicare. Compliments to the U.S. government. Three passions have governed my life. The longings for love, the search for knowledge, and the unbearable pity for the suffering of humankind. Love brings ecstasy and relieves loneliness. In the union of love, I've seen in a mystic miniature the prefiguring vision of the heavens that saints and poet, poets have imagined. <laughs> With equal passion, I've sought knowledge. I have wished to understand the hearts of people. I wish to know why the stars shine. Love and knowledge led me upwards to the heavens, but always pity brought me back to earth. Cries of pain reverberated in my heart of children in famine, of victims tortured, and of old people left helpless. I long to alleviate the evil, but I cannot, and I too suffer. This has been my life, and I have found it worth living. Kentucky is $450 million in the hole. $450 million Kentucky is in the hole. This is December 14, 2008. They're always in the hole. There's always been a budget shortfall for the last four years. $450 million in 2008, coming up on the 2009 year. So, we needed money then, we needed money before. Where's the money going to come from? It came from Obamacare. Now they're cutting education services in Kentucky. So, where's our money going to come from? Our kids? I mean, they're even cutting our education. They're cutting everything. So, a desperate situation requires a bold solution. Steve Brashear was elected on the moratorium of casinos. Where are the casinos? They're nowhere. The Republicans have been obstructing Obama just like the Republicans have been obstructing Steve Brashear here in Kentucky. They're obstructionists. That's all they're doing. So if he didn't get his casinos, he wasn't able to uh, unite, right, unite them because Republicans are dicks. So the revenue created from the casinos would have solved this budget shortfall uh, before education gets cut and legalizing marijuana would be even better than casinos. Legalizing marijuana would help the many small farmers instead of a few corporate fat cats and would generate more revenue overall. Not only would the state benefit from taxing it, but so would the small farmer. Raising marijuana and selling it at black market prices would raise $3.2 million per acre. $3.2 million. Small farmers would go from being poor hillbillies to wealthy tycoons. Kentucky would be put on the map and our standard of living for everybody would go up. It would finally be our turn to be living high on the hog. And if you don't believe me, do the math. If you sold marijuana for $5 an ounce, which is extraordinarily cheap, $5 an ounce, I think, an ounce now goes for, I don't know, uh, $400. $300. So if you were to sell an ounce now, okay, $300, say an ounce is now, but let's say we're selling at $5, so we're selling it much lower than anybody else. No one else would be able to compete $5 an ounce. With $5 an ounce, you get $80,000 per acre. So remember, $5, or $5 an ounce is much lower. It's $300 an ounce, but we're saying it's 5 So. $5 an ounce, you'd get $80,000 per acre. If Kentucky was the first state to legalize marijuana, the black market prices would still hold true for all the seven counties around Kentucky. For the seven counties around Kentucky, they would still be illegal, and so they would have to, uh, uh, you know, pay for much more than that. So for, you know, I got $200 an ounce here. So... Prices were at black market prices, $200 an ounce for that same acre that you would have got $80,000 at $5 an ounce, it'd be $3.2 million. So off of one fucking acre, 
one farmer off of one fucking acre would make three point two million dollars. Three point million two dollars. He'd be a million millionaire thrice times over. A fucking millionaire off of just one acre. And since tobacco is a dying industry and Kentucky farmers need a replacement crop before they go under. Marijuana serves a, as a perfect replace, replacement crop because you have all the equipment, you have all the supplies, and you got all the people who work and do all those things. So what we have to do is we got to find a way to put a tax on it, and then you've got your $450 million and then some for other social services such as health care, roads, schools, libraries, parks, hospitals, and fire departments. The legalization of marijuana would bring Kentucky billions of dollars, billions with a B, Considering we're the sixth poorest state in the nation, I bet many of us would be humble about the billions of dollars. In fact, I bet most of us would probably just be sitting pretty with just millions. So let's not forget that we Americans are guaranteed the right to our own bodies among many other supposed rights. We should have a right to our own bodies. Legalize marijuana. Legalize marijuana. Stop the war on drugs. Quit throwing potheads and smokers in jail. Especially when there's rapers, murderers, corporate criminals, and politicians are way more deserving of a jail cell. People that actually have crimes that actually have victims. Al Capone. Al Capone was created because of prohibition. That's what we're doing now. We're creating more Al Capones. We've tried prohibition in the 1930s. Do you remember your histories? 1930s, we've tried prohibition. It didn't work the first time, and it isn't working this time. Legalizing marijuana would put Joe Crackhead... Out of business. Joe, drug dealer, right? Joe, Joe, crackhead drug dealer. Legalizing marijuana would be less crime on the streets. Ronnie Lee Smith is right. Near Gallatin County, nearly 50 folks were busted with trafficking. And have you ever seen the movie Traffic? Traffic was uh, directed by a Kentuckian. And it accurately portrays our current uh, war on drugs today. So after 50 folks were busted with trafficking, what do you think happened to the black market? What do you think to the, the prices of the drugs? You didn't get rid of the drugs. You threw a lot of people in jail and you made their lives miserable. But did you get rid of the problem? Is the problem still there? It's always been there. It's been there for the last 100 years and it's going to continue to be there. All you're doing is attacking the supply side. All you're doing is just trying to stop the actual substance from existence existing, which you can't do that. So since you can't do that, you have to go after the demand. Educate people. Give plenty of opportunities so people aren't uh, looking for different, you know, substances to be able to sustain their miserable lives. So the price goes up. That's the whole point. That's why the war on drugs is failing. You're actually creating a profit incentive for people to go out and make money. In Appalachia, they are talking about uh, how there's no jobs in Appalachia. And I've heard Appalachians tell me that they have to sell drugs. What else can you do? You have to sell drugs when there's no jobs around and there's nothing else to do. Either become part of a coal miner, and if you can't get a job in the coal mines, then you got to sell drugs. There's nothing going on in Appalachia. So the profit incentive is making it uh, the bad economy, and the profit incentive combined is keeping the, um, the drugs... Uh, on the winning side, the police have been losing the war on drugs. So, there's a drug sweep in the middle of Gallatin County. Um, so, it says the cops are everywhere. Uh, that means that you have to raise the prices on your goods because there's more of a risk. Higher risk means higher reward. So, so since the police are enforcing the war on drugs, drove crackhead, the, the local militia, the local mafia, the local organized crime are much more powerful and rich. Because there's a war on drugs, the drug dealers are doing good. There's drug tells in Mexico because there's a war on drugs. I trust something I can see out in the open. Sunshine, much better than something that is hiding in the shadows. I like transparency. I'd rather take the drugs out from the dark underworld and put it out in the open in the stores. In the red light district, in the Smutville, where the uh, the uh, you know pornography and where the liquor and all the other debauchery things uh, a free society allows. So and to make it where you can claim it on your taxes, but so-called goody goodies don't understand what they're doing. Prohibition didn't work the fir first time. Surely Puritans thought they're doing some good, but instead crime increased. 
Al Capone was created. During the 1930s, Al Capone was created. It cost taxpayer money for the state drug agents and for the overcrowded private prisons. Kentucky's number one for the fastest growing prisons. And while doing nothing to avert, divert, or deter crime, it's done the opposite. It's created crime by increasing the profit incentive. When we citizens... When we citizens declare something to be illegal, anything, what happens to the price of that good? It skyrockets. In Galveston County, Joe Crackhead is making a killing. In Kentucky, in Louisville, in America, the drug dealers are winning. They are making a lot of money. So therein lies the rub. A truly free market would allow the legalization of drugs, all drugs, and good people would recognize the benefits for poor people, for sick people, for free people. The war on drugs, just say no. I remember going through the D.A.R.E. program, and I think it's time that we need to start uh, daring to be free. We need to dare to be free, dare to be a man, dare to stand up for our own selves, our own dignity, our own self-worth, and for our own bodies. It's our bodies. It's not yours, government. It's our body. So, you know... The government's losing the supposed war. It's not surprising. Drugs are winning. Considering we have privacy rights, you have, a, have to have a search warrant to enter my home. How can a substance not exist in the land of freedom and plenty? Or more important, why shouldn't it? A prominent lawyer in Kentucky declared smoking marijuana in the privacy of your own home is legal today, as the law stands on the books today. It's in his book, Gatewood Galbert's Last Free Man in America. Mr. Galbert details the legality of marijuana in your own home. 77 of Kentucky's 120 counties are dry, meaning no alcohol, but the police aren't busting down the doors of private citizens that have beer in their fridge, and by the same standard, it shouldn't apply to college potheads. They got a war on drugs, so the police cannot bother me. They got a war... In the Middle East, there's a war in the streets, but they won't declare a war on poverty. But they got a war on drugs, so the police can bother me. Tupac. So this is a solution for all the poor small farmers losing their property. Small family farms are going out at an accelerated rate. This problem is desperate. We need a bold solution. Being against the legalization of marijuana is stupid. Only a nitwit would be against it. Change.org is the number one issue in this country. In fact, by being for the criminalization of marijuana, you're keeping food out of poor people's mouths, you're having less education for our kids, and you support the buildup of a militarized police state. Many studies have done to find a cure for AIDS and cancer. Marijuana has proven to stall cancer, cure it in some cases, and are you telling me that you wouldn't allow my grandmother to live just because marijuana is illegal? And when I save her life, then you'd throw her in jail because she took the hemp uh, oil? Or uh, will you throw her in jail before her health doesn't ail no more? And why do you think throwing someone in jail would even help them? Those folks who believe that they're good are sadly mistaken. They're not helping. And their mistake is murdering thousands of innocent victims at a rate faster uh, than the Holocaust. Why? As what concerns the public health, that's to be addressed. Proceeds should be required to have an educational outreach in communities all across Kentucky to allow folks to know the dangers and to have a designated smut block for marijuana stores, liquor shops, and strip joints put in a corner off the main street away from the schools. Um, I guess the war on drugs gives the police something to do, but I know many police officers that either know people who are into drugs or they used to be users themselves. So how hypocritical for these fucking assholes to take an anti-drug stance while they're doing the drugs. So fuck those hypocrites and their self-righteous pursed up, sour face. If you smoke marijuana and you're enforcing the war on drugs, fuck you, you fucking prick. If you're going to admit to everybody, you've been around folks who smoked marijuana, why would you enforce the law on other occasions? What a fucking hypocrite. Many people don't like the police. That's because they use violence on nonviolent offenders. They create the problems. They start the trouble. And they weren't enforcing antiquated, ineffective drug laws. Then I could respect them. But until they... Admit their hypocrisy and their ignorance and their fucking douchebaggery, I won't. Respect is earned, not forced. Serve and protect me, not the petrochemical, pharmaceutical, military, industrial, transnational, corporate, fascist sons of bitches. If you're for criminalizing marijuana, not only are you stupid economically, a bad businessman and a woman, but you're also anti-American. When did we citizens lose our own right to our own bodies? If I want to repeatedly hit myself in the face... Who is the government to tell me not to? If I'm going to throw myself down a flight of stairs, who's the government to tell me I'm not allowed to injure myself? I'm allowed to injure myself. You can't tell me what to fucking do. Kentucky's $450 million in the red, 2008, always in the red. How much do we, the citizens, pay Frankfurt? 
what the fuck are the 138 representatives doing? We'd save a shitload of money just by firing all them fucking bastards. Uh, we should not reelect any of these assholes. We should throw out all the incumbents, throw all the fucking bums out. Um, and let's not forget, marijuana is just a fucking plant. It's a weed. It grows wild. It's God's creation. It's nature. And who are we as humble citizens, humble human beings, going to question the authority of God? God's nature, Mother Nature. Who are we to question the authority of God?